Well, hello. Greetings from Portland, Oregon area. Great to meet you today. Yes, likewise. I'd like to uh, introduce you to our audience. This is Joel Gunyumjian. Uh, he is uh, a classical guitarist, and he will be doing two concerts in the Portland area, one at the Dunn Community Center at Mary's Woods and a home concert at uh, Casa della Zizia Collegium Musica. Anyway, we'd like to um, uh, ask Joel, what got you started in playing classical guitar? So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background, how you, where you grew up, and uh, how you came to study classical guitar. Sure, thank you for having me. And I'm very excited about those series of concerts in Oregon. It will be my first time in the state. I am born and raised in Brazil. Uh, therefore, my first name, Joao. And I have also an Armenian background. And therefore, my last name, Kuyumjian. Uh, my paternal grandparents immigrated from Armenia to Brazil. So I am half Armenian. My mother is Brazilian. My father is born in Brazil, but uh, Armenian. And I initiated music studies when I was 12, playing electric guitar, actually. So I come from the pop sphere. And the interest in, in guitar, acoustic guitar, came a little later when I was a, a teenager, 15, 16 years old, uh, playing uh, jazz, Brazilian jazz, boss, bossa nova, samba. Uh, which eventually, a few years later, led to, to reading music and discovering scores by Bach, by Villa Lobos. And that introduced me to classical guitar playing around the time, uh, just, just before going to college, when I was 17, 18 years old. And then it was a point of no return. I fell in love with how beautiful the classical guitar sound could be. Uh, and, and then I, I, I found a really good master in Brazil, a great Brazilian classical guitar player, Paulo Martelli, was a great master to me. And I wanted to follow his footsteps. He's uh, an alumni from the Juilliard School in New York City. And uh, it eventually led me to the United States uh, to, to pursue uh, studies uh, at the Juilliard School. And that's how I relocated to the United States already as a professional musician. That um, is quite a journey. It, I'm sure that many people who have come to study classical guitar didn't didn't actually start with classical guitar, started sometimes with other approaches to playing the guitar itself, an electric guitar. Yes. Um, was the transition difficult? Uh, it was very challenging, yes, because the electric guitar, even though it's the same family of instruments, meaning it's a hand-plucked string instrument, the, the lute, the theorbo, the guitar, the electric guitar, the acoustic guitar, banjo, mandolin, etc. Uh, still, the electric guitar, we, I used to play with a pick and not really the fingers, let alone fingernails. Uh, so in terms of, first of all, sound production was a challenge. You know, the classical guitar is not amplified, it's played with the fingers, it's played with the nails. And then, of course, the technique is much different. Uh, the action of a classical guitar is, is much harder. But at the same time, um, like I was saying before, I, I was in love with it, so I didn't, I didn't mind doing all the work for uh, several hours uh, locked in my room. It was... It, it was fine and uh, I, I, I didn't mind uh, what it took to, to produce beautiful sounds, to polish technique. 
and to dive into the classical guitar repertoire. It probably also has given you an idea uh, for students that come to you that have now become excited about playing uh, the idea of playing classical guitar, uh, but didn't have that background. And you understand maybe a little bit better than a teacher that only came from a classical background of how to be able to transition because that transition can be a big challenge and sometimes is an obstacle to, for for students because they are um, having to change so many different things in position and what have you. I am curious, do you, uh, if you can remember, when you first started playing classical guitar, the instrument was going to be softer. Uh, you would, maybe in the beginning you weren't thinking that it was going to be, um, it was just going to be an addition to your electric guitar playing. It was instead of, instead of replacing it, uh, which I think is an important thing to kind of mention to people who may have an interest but want to continue to play uh, electric guitar as well. That um, it's it will require a slightly different technique, but you you're not going to lose anything in that process. Um, did you find that to be true? Yes, I. I my initial idea, as far as I can remember, was to to live in both worlds. Uh, but it was the. The classical guitar took over pretty fast. Um, and fortunately, I, I didn't feel like I was losing anything letting the electric guitar sit. I, I, I was telling myself, okay, I'm focusing on classical guitar now, but you know, next month or or in, in two, three months, I'm gonna go back to the classical guitar. But it was a natural loss of interest. <laughs> and um, you mentioned not um, uh, the transition from classical electric guitar to classical guitar and, and how to nurture students. Uh, interestingly, my, my students, they start very young with, with classical guitar. I'm also a, a Suzuki instructor, so my students start as as early as three years old. But the few cases of students that I got that were already teenagers and were already uh, playing chords and 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 strumming songs, uh, it's actually in some ways it's it's actually easier because. A lot of the material that electric guitarists and folk acoustic guitar players play, in some ways, is even more challenging than the classical because of the left hand chords and chord shifting. Um, so, so they have a, a leg up actually on on um, on on classical guitarists. And, young classical guitarists in, in that sense. So you can, every universe you tap into, uh, you're gonna acquire skills that you can later on use uh, in another universe, in another field, in another way of playing. Uh, so that's where I, I believe you can start when transitioning a student. Never tell a student that uh, you absolutely have to get remarried to this or that instrument uh, because whatever will happen, you know, will happen naturally. Uh, it's not because you're going to say you're going to force the student to do this way or that way. That just doesn't work. Um, if, the trans if, if the student wants to keep both instruments, uh, they will. Uh, if they still want their uh, initial instrument, they're going to stick with their in initial instrument. I don't think that there's anything that the teacher can say that will, that will uh, change 
their minds. I mean, they, they, they might uh, fake this way or, or that way, but sooner or later, the, the true callers show up. I mean, if, if they really want to dedicate to the classical guitar, to the electric guitar, or keep both. What kind of, uh, what role did your parents uh, play in uh, your early days of picking up the guitar? Were they supportive of your idea of, uh, did, they, did they play musical instrument? Well, I didn't mention this, but I did have an earlier start in music playing the piano when I was about six or seven. My mother uh, put me and my sister in, in piano lessons, but I wasn't really interested in music. It was more like a chore to me. It's just something that my parents would like to try with us. And strangely, my sister was really good. She, she has a great memory, so she could memorize music very fast. And, but, but she did a few years, uh, but now she doesn't play at all. Even if there's a piano around, she never ever plays the piano. And me, a few years down the road, I wanted to play the, the music that was around me, the pop music that I liked. So it came from within. I was very self-motivated. And, and then my parents, because of the frustrated piano experience, they thought it would be just a phase. Uh, so they just paid the conservatory in advance, uh, July or August month when I was on vacation. They thought it would just go away, you know, just pay for one month, two months, and then he would drop and <laughs> he'll see that it's not, not uh, easy to play an instrument. Uh, but then because I was so self-motivated because I wanted so badly to recreate the music that I was into at the time, uh, I, I never left. <laughs> and in fact, my parents did not give me an instrument when I was initiating electric guitar studies. Oh. And they, because they thought it would be a loss of money. So they, they told me that if I wanted to practice, I would have to go to the conservatory myself, walking by myself. Wow. And so I did, every day I would walk from my house to the conservatory by myself. I was 12 at the time to be able to practice. And then little by little, they understood that it wasn't just a phase. It was more like a, a means to, for me to express myself. And, and they would, it, was, it was much deeper than just a phase. And then down the road, they gave me an electric guitar and they started to become more supportive. And they, uh, to this day, they're very supportive. Um, they, they never, not supportive in, in ways of, of uh, watching my lessons or, or playing together. They, they don't play any musical instrument, but very supportive in terms of uh, being at my shows and, and making other people uh, know about my work. And in and, and that sense, we so, were always very supportive. So if I, hearing you right, um, at the point that you became the most determined to pursue guitar was about the age of 12. Correct, yes. And this is good for, you know, for uh, our audiences to hear uh, because oftentimes when people uh, provide music education to children, they think young, mm -hmm. but by the time they get to middle school um, and high school, they don't invest sometimes as much support 
And that is a critical time in child development uh, of finding yourself, of expressing yourself, and finding productive ways to express feelings and explore new things. Uh, right. Music offers that and also this, with, particularly with the classical repertoire, um, a variety of cultural expressions of those same human feelings. I mean, uh, we all share the same human experience in terms of our emotions and our, our desires in, in, a, in a general way, uh, but culturally we have different ways of expressing it. And um, there's a real, I think, joy and power that one gets to experience things that that are removed and yet feel so deeply personal at the same time. Um, so interesting, you had actually a few little roadblocks that could have could have deterred you, but in fact, your desire is what propelled you, and the obstacles. Well, as you know, in adolescence, obstacles are. Well, that's what kind of makes it all worthwhile. Sometimes is being able to overcome those obstacles. So, yeah. um, uh, congratulations on on making that happen because. That was that came from deep within, which is, um, uh, brings me to it. Another uh, question: um, As you've kind of gone on this journey, who were some of the most important musical influences? I mean, your teachers, obviously. Maybe maybe it would be your teachers, um, or maybe uh, musicians you heard, or what have you. Who would you point to as being uh, some of the most important musical influences on you? Well, I first got to mention my classical guitar teacher back home in Brazil. Uh, I already uh, talked about him. His name is Paulo Martelli. He's an amazing uh, classical guitarist who also plays 11 string guitar nowadays. Uh, he has a very prolific career on stage, recordings also. And like I mentioned before, I wanted to follow, follow his footsteps. That's why I came to the U.S. and, and went to, to Juilliard for my master's degree. So he's, a, I think that goes without saying that he's a big influence. He's an, an idol whose footsteps I wanted to, to follow and model af after. Uh, and he, his music is incredible. I, I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, other than, than, than him, than uh, as, as performer and educator, there's also the main players I, I listen to all the time, Julian Brin. Andrea Segovia. There was a phase actually that I was so into Andrea Segovia recordings uh, that I I imitated his interpretation uh, from start to finish, and then at one point I I brought the the interpretation to my teacher and and he laughed because it was it was very much alike. The recording, but not not exactly what I needed at the time. The type of interpretation that I needed to learn, <laughs> and of course, he wanted me to develop my own interpretation as opposed to. But it was a a very it's part of the learning process. You understand how one how your idol related to to the that piece of music. So later on, you can find yours. You can take other turns. Yes. And I listen to um, other idols and influences are not guitarists. I listen a lot to piano music. I, I adore pianists like uh, Michelangeli, mm. like, uh, Richter, mm -hmm. uh, Claudio Ahau. Those are big influences on 
on ex expressing myself on the guitar and the way they do the legato and and the depth of their interpretations is something I try to to bring to my music making as well. Uh, listening to great orchestras, great conductors like Carlos Kleiber, uh, Sergio Celibidaki. Uh, also, the, the guitar is amazing that Berlioz used to say that you can fit an orchestra in the guitar because it's full of colors and you can do polyphony and each string can be a different instrument. And Soar also uh, used to think the guitar grew like, like an orchestra, three voices, very delineated. So those are my main influences, I guess. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I think that's what you have a real passion for performance and developing your musicianship, listening to uh, other instrumentalists, piano, and orchestra. Orchestra is very important because a lot of times when you're playing a piece of music, you can bring that into the formula and uh, turn a piece which, you know, when Ravel did the arrangement for uh, pictures at an exhibition, he turned a piano piece into an orchestral piece. In a sense, that's something the piano couldn't do uh, in the same way as a guitar is able to do uh, because we can simulate sometimes uh, different sections of an orchestra by where and how we strike the strings. Yes. Um, so it's that's a really important part. And the musical um, nuances and phrasing and breathing that uh, you will pick up by listening to the best, Michelangelo, that's, you know, one of the great, uh, great um, uh, pianists of all time. And the others that you mentioned as well, I particularly liked Richter and, and Sirkin, uh, uh, Rudolf Sirkin in particular. Well, um, great. Uh, I think we've learned a little bit about those things about yourself and, and how you came to, to, um, to the place that you're at now. We didn't mention all the schools and all the, those other things, but I'd like you to tell us a little bit about your projects and, and uh, uh, your upcoming program, a little bit about what you're going to treat our audiences to out here in Portland. Yes, I have just released an all Armenian album at one point in my life and career. Uh, that's something that I wanted to, to dig deep into. Uh, my first album is on Brazilian music. I was born and raised in Brazil. It was very natural. The second album is entirely dedicated to Bach that I studied since I was a teenager. And so for this third and most recent album, I wanted to discover um, other parts of my musicality that were untapped. And the funny thing is that when I started to play Armenian music, it's like this dormant side of me blossomed and came to life. And I felt even more connected to that music than with Brazilian music. It was very, very strange and, uh, and also very warm feeling. Uh, it's, it's like I was in a way coming back home to some home that I never lived at. Mm. And it's, uh, that's most of what the program in the shows in Oregon will revolve um, around Armenian music. I will also sprinkle it with uh, Villa Lobos, the major classical composer from Brazil, and also Isa Calbenis, because I, I decided to include a Spanish piece from a, a Spanish composer because the guitar is so intrinsically uh, related to, to the culture of, of Spain that uh, most people associate the classical guitar just as the Spanish guitar. So it, it's always nice when someone who doesn't know music very well uh, 
and is expecting some rasgueados uh, get it. You know, there, so there's a, something for for everybody, I guess, in in this program I'm presenting. And I believe the the rest of the question was on future projects. Yes, uh, I'm planning a few uh, releases of singles with the uh, the standard classical guitar repertoire. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but probably a few works by Soar will be coming out of the oven in 2023. And uh, perhaps a little further down the road, there's a Brazilian uh, young composer, Rafael Marino Arcaro, who is uh, finishing his PhD in England, in London, that he has works for the classical guitar that I, I would like to, to prepare, practice, and possibly maybe one day record. Uh, so, so that's also on the horizon. Excellent. Well, and um, with the with the music that you are talking about, the the CDs that you have completed and projects in the future, how uh, can people find you and your music? Well, I'm on all streaming platforms uh, like Apple Music, Spotify, Deezer, YouTube. Um, I have been gaining more traction on, on Spotify. Uh, Spotify allows you to pitch your music to users, playlists, or uh, editorial uh, playlists that are curated by Spotify editors themselves. Uh, so this is what I try to, where I try to direct people to. Uh, I think on Spotify, uh, you can learn a little bit about my, my biography, see some photos and all the albums, all that I have best to offer uh, is all there or all albums, singles and EPs are, are displayed there very neatly. And uh, I've been having uh, lucky to have some success there. One of the tracks uh, just past the mark of half half a million streams wow. and altogether I've been getting over two million streams so it's it's great to to share the music that I'm passionate about especially the recent Armenian music that very few people know uh, if you exclude uh, Armenians themselves so it's great to bring that music to a much, much, much larger audience. So it, it feels very, uh, it feels very nice and rewarding. Fantastic. Well, but it has been a pleasure to finally meet uh, and to hear your background and a little bit about how you've uh, developed into such a, an outstanding guitarist. And we look forward to hearing you. Yes, um, Thank you very much for, for agreeing to this interview. And um, I hope that our, our viewers will uh, take this as an opportunity to, to visit uh, your platforms, especially on Spotify, and um, seek out your, your website. And for those of you who are in the proximity next week uh, on Saturday, the 5th of November, drop a note to us and we will reserve a seat for you. Thanks again, Joel, for joining us in this interview. It was great to be able to meet with you today. <laughs>